fortnight after the earthquake which brought Nepal to a standstill, normalcy is just a word here. The immediate relief operations are over. But now is the time for the long and difficult process of rebuilding the nation, its homes, its temples, its schools and more. Over the next 30 minutes, the mammoth challenges ahead of Nepal. For over a thousand years, the Swayambhunath Temple has watched over Kathmandu as the faithful have gathered. Today it lies in ruins. The main stupa has crater-like cracks. Over 200 members, the temple's fraternity, are living in open tents. If we are not saved, who will do the puja? Who will save the God and the Goddess? Now how many days will we stay like this? Even as the Nepal army, local men and international volunteers pull up their sleeves clearing the debris could take weeks, rebuilding years. The temple management is seeking international aid to reconstruct this world heritage site. We come here just to, to give help to people in Nepal, in Kathmandu. We, we go to uh, Bhaktapur and so on and we, we go in all the places. Mm. And we meet people, and we so you've give been help. At some others, uh, we we just uh, give help, uh, very simply. Other countries, if they please, they want to help, then they come here. They can contact to the Department of Archaeology with together, and they can spend themselves. Then we don't want to money. Trying to garner support for the temple is a local artist. That night when she Salil Subedi. He has performed here before, in happier times, when this was a cultural nerve center, inspiring an entire generation of artists. For us, like when we come and use this space, this space is not only a traditional space, it's a very interactive space, but which gives us the essence of the root. And at the same time, it gives us possibilities to explore new dimensions, new horizons in our uh, expression of the contemporary times. Kambunath is not just a Buddhist temple, it's the conference of cultures. It has Buddhism, Hinduism, in fact the 1970s hippie movement also found its salvation here. Microcosmically speaking, this reflects the Kathmandu city itself. From Swayambhu Nath to the Pashupati Nath, the earthquake has spared very little. This old age home at the Pashupati Nath complex is in shambles. More than 200 elderly who once lived here are both shocked and thankful at the same time. <laughs> We were really scared when the earthquake hit. We couldn't move out. We are living a scared life. There are moments in life which give you hope, even during the times of such Himalayan disaster. On Saturday, all the 230 members of this area were actually having a meal outside when the earthquake occurred. Consequently, the building did develop severe cracks and damages, but no one was injured here. It was the same story for the children of the orphanage Bal Mandir. Their home collapsed, but they were in the open for a function when the earth split. It was very terrible and it was very shocking to shift the children from there. We kept all the kids in the tent for two days. Uh, actually, there was a rumor of the uh, aftershock for till the 72 hours, and we kept in the open space with the tent. More than 1,40,000 children have been rendered homeless across Nepal. 
numerous schools reduced to rubble. Many are now getting informal education in childcare centers like these. The attempt more at bringing some form of normalcy back to them. As we know, many children have lost their houses, the schools are damaged, so this place helps them to get back to normal and this, all, this place also helps them to get over the psychosocial stress that they have faced. This is the Tunik Hill relief camp right at the heart of Kathmandu. We can see a number of people have settled here from all across the area. There are a few NGOs who are operating here, some providing basic education, some providing the daily meals. But the moment you step out of this Kathmandu Valley, the condition of those who have been affected goes down drastically. We are on our way with the relief team to the Birta Deorali village in Kavre district. No aid has reached here. All the relief work is concentrated in, only in Kathmandu Valley, not on the of Kathmandu Valley. We travel close to 90 kilometers, four hours off the highway. Locals guide us. It's almost dark when we reach our destination. It's late evening now and we have just reached Kavri, one of the worst affected areas. No relief has reached here, over 40 people have died. Where I'm standing right now used to be a house at one point of time. But as you can see, it's only stones which are visible here. We travel through the day to reach this place. And uh, now on this side, we can see relief materials are being taken out. They would be supplied to the people of the zone who claim that no uh, relief has reached them so far. Over 50 houses have been reduced to rubble. People of the village have just one request. This is the first team. Uh, yeah. This is the first media that you are coming here. Before this, no one has come here. It's a remote area. No government has come here. So it's very difficult to wear. There are more than 300 people. They are having so much problem. So if you can suggest we come in any other place to come, we, we really need it. Nepal has always been in the high risk zone on cases of human trafficking. This earthquake has been particularly severe in areas like these, which are notorious for flesh trade, leaving over 40,000 women exposed to the chances of gender and sexual violence. Minuka Thapa is a former sex worker herself. She works under the umbrella name of Raksha Nepal and has been focused in helping women who may find themselves in the world of trafficking in these tragic times. Right time for traffickers to trafficking the girls, uh, innocent girls, because they need helping hand, they need uh, mm, uh, love and they, can, they could, our girls could anytime traffic, they could anytime in vulnerable situation. So this is a very worried, uh, actually personally I am very worried about them. Menka is already receiving calls of children being picked up. One um, uh, friend was saying uh, the in near Kathmandu and out of the valley in uh, Kabre also, there were many children is uh, missing. We met a traffic woman in her shelter. She echoed the same fear. A disaster like this puts women at greater risk. Because of earthquake, Many families have lost everything. I feel many women from my area could be pushed into sex trade. This neighborhood pub, like many other, has become the focal point of relief activity. Friends who used to drink together are now working together to get Nepal back on track. It came together with a group of friends after the earthquake. Um, we met and everybody wanted, everybody wanted to help each other or we wanted to reach out to places. And uh, we saw that we wanted to connect, you know, how do we connect the dots. So, I mean, the idea just popped in that, okay, you've got an organization that's connected through that. Using the internet to network with other groups, 
These youngsters are ensuring no duplicacy of relief work take place even as they reach out to the farthest corners. Trying to coordinate, uh, make sure that you know places that are affected receive it, uh, make sure there's no duplication, uh, uploading all the data onto the web, you know, all of that. Base camp, the pub has now turned into the base camp for all the relief activities. A number of coordinates are being shared here. Over 21 places have been reached by these young volunteers who have now made this their full-time activity. As Nepal battles one of its darkest stars, there are many who are giving it the audacity of hope. Coming up ahead, an archaeologist, a doctor, mortuary in charge of life during and post the earthquake. That OT light, which was just above her, she told that it may have fallen down. Doctor, please, what should I do? I told that you can't move and we will also not move. Welcome back. You're watching the aftermath of the Himalayan tragedy. As my colleague Shubhajit reported in the first half, the task at hand is humongous. Even as people come to terms with the tragedy, they're realizing how the tremors have affected their lives. In the last few days, I met a cafe owner, an archaeologist, a doctor, the in charge of a mortuary. This is their story. <laughs> We decided that the gate is very vulnerable and it's very risky to walk through and the vehicles have to be come here because for the emergency supplies. So the, because of the vulnerability of the gate, we have decided to demolish the gate. From the bylaws, uh, we shouldn't demolish any historical things, but we have to. It was really sad because uh, the, we have very sentimental value with the heritage sites. The life is more important than the heritage. The municipality wanted to demolish already, but the Department of Archaeology was really reluctant to demolish it, and they were stopping to demolish it and rebuild again. But uh, you see the coincidence, the earthquake came and it, it went up itself. We have to rebuild the demolished temple also, everything. And people are still coming to the broken temple and they are worshipping and doing pujas, they are offering flowers to the pinnacle of the temple. So it's very touchy and very sentimental thing. I'm at home Saturday. We are talking. And at that time, uh, earthquake came. And uh, we are trying to run, run away from the room because of our flight is up top. And we are, all are scared. No, we are trying to run, but it's fall down. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, coffee shop, eight, eight hour coffee shop, whole, whole night, whole day. Every day it's open. Saturday the whole night open. Every people people was there, no? The garden and they all come to eat tea, coffee and cigarette. Whole night we cannot sleep. If we die, wherever we see, stay, we die, no? <laughs> I thought like that. <laughs> Husband is very scared. First night, Monday night he doesn't want to go at room. I told him. If you, if you love us, you come and you stay with us. Wherever, wherever we go, we will die. If God wants that, no. Sab ghar me koi log nahi hai na. And sunsan hai isliye me dara tha. Waha par dead body hai, wo pata nahi tha. Laga aise building, wo wall khas gaya, aise laga tha. नहीं वो बड़ी इतना बड़ी तो देखा नहीं हालांकि किसी का टाउ को घुरा किसी का खुट्टा किसी का पेट किसी का अंडा बनी किसी का दो बड़ी ने छुट्टा है दो टुकड़ा हो गया तीन टुकड़ा किसी का हाथ भी है किसी का पैर भी है 
गर्न पडेगा सेवा भी गर्न पडेगा उ मजबुरी अवधि जागिर भी है दूसरा अब सेवा भी है गर्न पडेगा एक एक जो एक आदमी त गर्न त पडेगा जरुर कोही नै गरेको त क्या क्या हुआ 24 घण्टे मा 2 4 घण्टे सो जाइंगे उ भी निन्द्रा नै लागता है क्या करेगा बैठेगा उ दिन भरि का जो गुरुजु गर्न पडेगा कितना बड़ी किस लगी है कितना बड़ी बाकी है घायते कितना आ गया हैं कितना मेल आ गया कितना फीमेल आ गया बहुत वो जो शरीर भी सब गंदा आता है स्वास्थ्य भी गंदा आता है उसको उसको गंद In the very beginning, when the uh, beginning of the rescue time, it was a phrase, I mean, that immediately they were, they were buried and they were rescued, so we didn't have any problem in the, during that period. But now it's almost three or four days, and then uh, because of the season, hot season, and all those things, uh, it is starts smelling. smelling. Normally, when we receive the body, we'll uh, check. Uh, do the, all the necessary legal documentation of the body and then we'll make a shots and take the DNAs and all those things. Uh, and then if during the shots, if you find any identification, all those things, we'll uh, inform their relatives and all those things. If not, then we'll uh, take all the pictures, post it on our websites uh, and then wait for the, uh, their families to claim the body. If not, then we'll keep them in freezing for a few days, and if not, then we'll do according to the process of disaster management. I'm uh, definitely a CSSR, uh, I mean, collapse structure, search and rescue uh, training, I did that already, so uh, that will have been also a better uh, idea to, uh, I mean, get people alive from the um, debris and all those things, but uh, yeah, it's all the same, you know. I was doing caesarean section, the baby was already out and uh, it was a IUFD baby, intrauterine fetal death, baby was already dead inside uterus but the baby was very weak, mother is very high BP and almost I was at the end of closing the uterus, the table fan in front of me it filled up and cautery machine which was in the back that came to me and hit me in the back. And then I thought that something is wrong over there and uh, the instrument table trolley where the instruments are kept for surgery, it went off. Then I thought that it must have earthquake. I was, I had to stop for few minutes because I could not stitch on due to this vibration. And when the measure uh, this vibration went up, then I started doing the patient was telling that OT light, which was just above her, she told that it may have fallen down. Doctor, please, what should I do? I told that you can't move and we will also not move. Don't worry. I was telling like that. And she was discharged today and she was fine. That is, baby actually, that baby was already uh, expired inside uterus. The baby was very weak, she could not deliver vaginally, so we did caesarean section for that purpose. Around after 15 minutes, I, I finished the surgery, and by that time, almost whole hospital was already evacuated. Properly, it is not functioning till now, but looking after the patients, uh, within two hours, we are, within almost it was going on, in emergency, delivery were going, going on, because it could not be stopped. No, actually, uh, what I thought at that time was, uh, I was on duty and we have selected the patient, we have selected the time, we have selected the operation theatre, we have uh, selected all the times for looking after the patient. So, at that moment I should see first to the patients. While international agencies took much of the credit, there are incredible stories of the average Nepali standing by their fellow countrymen. In the aftermath as well, they remain steadfast and committed.
The task at hand is a truly Himalayan one. It will take more than resilience and fortitude. But this renewed sense of coming together in the time of despair is likely to see Nepal re-emerge. With prayers on our lips from my entire team here, thanks for watching.